My name is Petronella Mino. I'm 16 years old. I'm from the Cook Islands. Bula, hello. My name is Michael. I'm from Fiji. I'm uh, 16 years old. My name is Matangara Koi Mino. My name's Dylan Latoga. Um, I'm half Samoan, half Cook Island. Uh, my name is Tukwa Samuel. I'm from Cook Islands. I've got two older brothers, a younger sister and myself. I'm expected to take care of my younger sister, wake up every morning to get her ready for school because my mum, my dad and my two older brothers are at work. My role I play in my family is babysitting my younger sisters and brothers and my nieces and nephews. I'm the eldest in my family. My parents are separated, so my stepdad comes and goes. So basically I'm like the father in the house, so I look after my youngest brother and my younger sister. My role in my family is just to look after my younger sister till, till my parents get home. My responsibilities are to look after my two nieces, clean up the house. And one of the things that I learnt was really about the uh, young people having a huge amount of family responsibility in terms of looking after siblings um, and you know cooking the meals at night. I do Cook Island dancing. We practice from after school around four or five o'clock. My tradition is um, boys getting their hair cut, dancing, singing, string band. Your parents organise a hair cutting ceremony for you. You have people come cut your hair. They give you money or anything just to show their respects to the person that ha that's having the hair cutting. We all have come together and um, have a feast. We have um, a hangi. In Fiji, our traditions are the fire walking. Um, the lover and drinking cover. Sports, which is rugby, is a big thing in the Pacific Island. So basically, like, if my dad plays rugby, I have to play rugby. I'm expected to be in dancing. I practice twice a week, but if there's a show or a performance that we have to do, we practice three times a week dancing. After schools, I have to look after my sister, so she, she's safe. My cultural expectations are to show my respects. Family is a huge, huge part of who we are, part of our culture. Um, and for the family to be there, um, you know, it's something that's very, very important to us. And sometimes, unfortunately, you know, it means that school is put on you know, the back burner. But um, you know, family is definitely something that we consider a priority in our lives. When I have to practice, I have to go home, babysit. After my sister, brother comes back home, takes care of the rest while I practice dancing, and then around 9 to 10, I have to go home and study. I have to take so much time off school for specific occasions. You've got to be there when someone passes and it's just hard to be there at the same time as school's running and teachers wondering why or what happened and you're just too scared to tell them that yeah, you're upset already. There's various reasons around either babysitting issues, you know, you've got younger siblings that you have to look after, uh, being involved in cultural musical groups and things like that, that have to travel for events or uh, for festivals. Um, sometimes that unfortunately takes priority over coming to school. Experience with the families has been very positive. Um, however, it has taken a bit of time um, in terms of getting to know how their cultures work and their families um, work. I like the teachers to understand that I have other responsibilities like looking after my younger siblings and my two younger nieces and that I have dancing that I'd like to be encouraged more 
by the teachers in and out of school. I want the teachers to understand my cultural backgrounds and where I come from and what happens at home, outside of school, before school. I just want the teachers to know that I have outside commitments as well. Like rugby for me is like my main goal. They love seeing their teachers outside of school and coming to watch them and um, it really does make a difference I guess within the classroom. My parents, they're usually busy and they don't have enough time on their minds to call school and yeah, just contact the teachers about us because they've got everything else going on around them. My parents don't engage with anything in this school because I don't tell them. They're just very busy with uh, their work, trying to provide food for the table. They actually haven't been to any parent-teacher interviews since I started Year 7, but I'm not sure why they don't. They have other commitments they have to take care of. I think uh, students and the teachers should uh, have a, a very good bond, a very good relationship with each other, so like they understand the way they teach, the way they learn. Not let me down when I get something wrong, or just to help me, encourage me to get the right answers and make everything perfect for them and me as well. Uh, for me personally, I need one-on-one -on -one a lot because when I'm around friends, I talk a lot and I get distracted a lot. I need motivation to get me doing work. If I don't have that, I won't do it. Be practical, you know, we're very um, visual and practical people um, and that's the way our, you know, our kids learn. I mean, that's just part of the culture and, and the way we are. I have um, worked quite closely with a number of our students and their families um, to try and engage them and um, encourage them to attend school on a regular basis. The best way for the school to contact my parents is probably visit, visiting them. Writing a note to give to me for my parents to read come to come to them like have a meeting with them sit down have a coffee or something like that maybe send a letter call them up and just make make maybe make an appointment with them so that we can all have a chat about what's happening at school and what's happening outside you want to be able to make sure that the the message that you are going to be conveying to the to the parent is something that you've discussed with the, with the young person, with the student. So you want to be able to, you know, be transparent about what you're going to be talking about with your parent. It's good to actually get a phone call sometimes to say, look, your kid's, you know, doing well. Or... In terms of communication between the, the families and the school, um, I think there's a, um, a lot of things that we could be doing better. And I think that, it, it, certainly in my experience, is that um, making that first, first contact as a teacher um, certainly bridges that gap and makes things more comfortable. And we need to ask the students um, on an individual basis how um, the best way to contact their family is, because different families um, work in different ways.